Hi everybody, Steve Swift here, and I hope you're staying home safe and healthy. And we're gonna talk about making some art in isolation. Um, we're gonna talk about using a couple of things we all have in our households, um, and that's a pen, a pencil, and a couple of surprise uh, things that I'll be using throughout the rest of the demo. Just kind of talking about some techniques as well with both of those. Um, and these are very simple, easy techniques that anyone can use, and you can practice with and play with and really have some fun. So let's talk about that. Now I'm going to be using a couple of things. First off, we're going to be using this Field Notes brand simple ballpoint pen. Shout out to Field Notes. I like these guys quite a bit. Fieldnotesbrand.com, pretty cool. And then uh, we're going to be using Field Notes number two pencils. It's just a couple of the probably the most uh, simple types of a pen I have and pencil I have here in the house. I also have quite a bit of uh, art supplies like you know, these acrylic pens and different markers and micro uh, micron pens and things like that all over the place. and and extra weird pens. I also really like these. These are called Black Wings, and they have a few different styles of these. This is the Palomino, and um, they're really great graphite, and they put a lot of care into their graphite. Now, I'm gonna be using a bristle board here uh, to show you a couple of techniques first off, but this is bristle board I brought locally, and most of everything I have in my studio around me has been um, bought uh, locally. First, um, if I really can't find something or if I had to order something special from France or something along that lines, then um, maybe I did. I think I got some uh, some special shellacs and things like that that I used to, I use in that are in my studio that I order from overseas. But most everything else I bought right here at Color Country. Shout out to Nick. Um, and I know he's doing curbside service, so if you're looking for some art supplies, you want to get something, you know, give him a call. He'll uh, run the numbers for you over the phone and, and deliver it right to your trunk. So um, no excuse not to be able to get some fun art supplies, including watercolors, anything along that lines. Um, but first, let's start with uh, some activities I just want to play with. I'm going to start with a number two pencil, nice and easy. You can see I've even worn down this uh, eraser here pretty well already, but we're gonna start with a technique, an activity I like to call scribble and fill, something I do all the time. Um, I have often just made marks on a page, just for fun, I'll just make marks, it doesn't even matter what I'm doing, um, and try and come up with a reason or a rhyme as to why I've done that. But Paul Klee, he used to just take his pencil and he would work it in such a way that um, he was moving in a semi-random manner. And uh, he called that taking the line for a walk. So we're gonna do a little bit of that real quick for fun. And this is great because it works for kids of all ages, uh, including myself. I did some of this before I started the exercise too, before I started this demo. So let's kind of play around, shall we? So he would just, kind of semi-randomly move the pencil. Um, and now I'm ending up getting these shapes. So then the next thing we want to talk about is using these shapes to fill in um, just some patterns. Just have some fun with it and, and, and it's kind of good to just be, you know, nonsensical, it doesn't have to make any sense, it's just making some random patterns inside of these scribbled lines and just designing something, whatever you want. Probably a lot of you did this at home when or in school um, when your math teacher was boring you because you're more creative than you are obsessed with math, at least I am. And uh, you might have got zoned out. Many a day I got zoned out while just drawing for fun. And this is just a good exercise to loosen up your mind a little bit and really play around with patterns. So none of this is, I'm not taking this seriously. It doesn't have to be anything very serious. Um, I'm just enjoying the idea of 
creating some type of pattern in here. So maybe we'll make this one branch out a little bit just for fun. Working with sort of organic shapes, things like that. And this is what we call scribble and fill. Sometimes I'll scribble and fill and then maybe I'll start to see something while I'm working on my piece and just not really get too crazy with it, but you know, start to form it into something real. And I don't, I don't even know if I'm seeing anything real right now, but I am just having some fun with it. Maybe I want to scribble a little more here. There we go. Who says you can't add? This is just for fun. And then start to section off. I'm liking these. Using some of these contour hatching techniques, which we'll talk about a little bit later because I'm going to be talking about a couple different things throughout this video. Okay, so, and then maybe I'll get distracted and come over here and draw my neck a little bit more. Um, that's scribble and fill. So, this is kind of fun and a good example. You can continue to do as many as you wanted, just randomly taking the line for a walk and then really get into it and have all kinds of sections you can fill and then go from there you never know move it around have some fun with it and uh, create some abstract art okay next thing i'm going to talk about is blind contour drawing so blind contour drawing is when you can be not you're not looking at your paper you're just looking at something, an object, it could be anything. It could be yourself in a mirror. This is a fun game to play with uh, family members. I've seen this often done at, you know, house parties, things like that, just hanging out with friends or something, just weird artists and enjoying ourselves. But um, this is where you just put the pen or the pencil to the page and then look at whatever it is you're gonna draw intently and do not look down at your drawing at all and do not lift your hand, just draw, try and draw with a continuous line. So this could be a continuous line blind contour drawing. But um, you could, I guess, maybe try and lift a little bit if you want and just see what happens. But you, I tend to try and follow the edge of something. So for fun, I'm going to just draw my face. I'm going to start my face in the camera here real quick, and we'll see what I can come up with. Um, this is not practiced ahead of time, so I can't guarantee <laughs> uh, what this ends up looking like. Here we go. Okay, so... Uh, start here, and then the idea is this is just to get an idea of where your mind this thing. I can already tell that I'm messing this up. And let's come down here. I think I put my nose somewhere around there. Maybe there, this is on my beard. Let's come back in here and draw some lips. Okay, blind contour drawing. Oh, and wow, it's, uh, it looks like something. <laughs> it, looks, it looks more than I thought it was gonna look like, so that's hilarious. Uh, yeah, but it's just a really fun um, test uh, just to mess with your skills, just to see how we all just kind of have a hard time drawing uh, in general. But, you know, it's you got to start somewhere. So why not start with a blind contour drawing? Because then you're not going to beat yourself up about it as much. Um, now, 
let's look into the next thing I wanted to talk about, which was hatching. So hatching is a great technique to use with pen. So let's switch to another piece of paper. I'll come back to this one in a minute. And we're gonna pull this out and talk about hatching. So now I've just got a good, nice, old fashioned pen, ballpoint pen here that we're using to draw with. So this ballpoint pen, uh, we're gonna talk about a few different pen and ink hatching techniques. Um, one of which is, um, and one of my favorite artists I like to think of actually before I get into that when I like, my favorite artist I like to um, think about when I do think about hatching, he was a master at it, was Morris Sendek, um, Morris Sendek, so uh, he did Where the Wild Things Are. Um, and you can look up Maurice's work online really easy. I'll share a couple couple, couple uh, of images here, uh, and then we'll get into these techniques. So first off, let's talk about the different types of hatching that we have. So we have um, some hatching examples, linear, cross, and contour hatching. So with linear hatching, we're going to make some squares. And this is for filling in just any kind of shading that you're doing on an object. So I'm just going to do some linear hatching here, as you can see. And it can be diagonal, straight up and down. I like to draw. Um, I'm left-handed. So my entire life has been spent making a mess on the page, it's just how it is for me. But um, I try to pull down towards myself whenever I'm working. I, I find it's not as easy uh, you know, for me to go away and have more of a control. My na Your natural hand is to come like this to work its way in. So this is what we call linear hatching. So linear hatching, and then let's move into some cross hatching and contour hatching. And I'll show a little bit of each of those examples here in a minute. Um, contour being one of my favorite um, projects I did when I was working through school is drawing random objects and then following them with a contour hatch. So we'll show you how that works here in a minute. Cross hatching is just another almost linear version of this hatching technique. And I'll just do a couple squares here for cross hatching. So with cross, you are literally doing that. You're just creating your first linear hatch, just like normal. And then we're going to do a cross hatch like this. And you'll notice now we're getting a denser shade than with our linear lines above. Now below, we're getting a denser shade here. And I'll do some of those on a diagonal as well. So we can just kind of see how that works. And then of course the last one which is contour contour hatching. We'll do a little square here, a little square here. And maybe we'll play around with that here in a second too. But that would be either cross or in a type of linear type fashion you could do these contours so that you're giving form to whatever it is you're gonna be drawing on. And you could even do cross contour hatching, however that works for you. So these are just a few techniques um, and hatching examples that are quite wide, you know, widely used when working with ink. So I don't know, for instance, if I just draw, let's draw an eye with my pen here. And I do not consider myself to be a master artist. I never have, but I enjoy just drawing for fun. Let's just draw kind of a angry looking eye here. Um, okay, just for giggles. And give it some some shading. So I kind of came in here a little too much with that, maybe. And we'll start to use some of these techniques. So for fun, maybe there's a nose over here too for this eye. 
I like to loosely draw whenever I'm drawing. I don't get as technical as other artists do uh, because then my messy image can be whatever I want it to be. I don't really need to commit anything too much because I can always redraw it. That's the beauty of this. Uh, it gives you time, it gives you the ability to work. So let's do a little bit of shading. For instance, if I use some linear hatching marks, they don't have to be filling an area, right? They can be any kind. And I might even transition those into a little bit of contour hatched images. Maybe under here in the eyelid, they might go. This top eyelid has some hatching here like that for fun. And then maybe the bottom eyelid, I'll do a little curve, true contour hatching there. And now you'll notice if I curve my Hatch. I'm now starting to create a little bit of form with that. And maybe underneath the nose, we'll, we'll draw that here a little bit. I'll draw it this way. But maybe if I do a cross hatching technique underneath my nose, that now you can see that's darker. Because it is darker for my shadow. I like to think where my light's coming from sometimes. Obviously, my light's coming from this direction. I'll do that a lot whenever I'm working through a lot of these ideas um, and just kind of working through hatching. So let's, let's even come up here on the bridge of this nose a little bit and do some more of that contour hatching. We'll talk about that. Okay, so that's just some ink techniques that you can use to draw out some ideas and keep it loose, keep it fun, don't get too serious. You don't have to become Picasso in his early life, not necessarily in the later works. I always like to talk about that with students sometimes when I say, when people joke about Picasso being this kind of a mess of a artist and um, and that his work seems so simple later in life, right? Because they're more of that modern style of art. But if you've ever seen his work done early in his childhood when he was truly studying like a master, uh, it's head and shoulders over this eyeball and partial nose. I'll tell you that much. Okay, so let's move on to working in uh, and talking about more of this cross contour drawing. So cross contour drawing uh, after hatching. This is a, these are just some of those examples. Now we're going to go into cross contour drawing. So I'm going to bring back this page that I had and I drew a little bit earlier before I started the demo. So this is actually going to be, I'll use a pencil, I think, for this one. And then we're going to talk about shading a little bit, too. But cross contour, like I said, is more of an idea of fully doing a, a, a cross contour drawing, not just the hatching. So we're not looking to just fill in um, one you know, we're not making shading or anything along that lines. That's something for the ink. We're talking about filling in the form, giving the form to the image that we're drawing as we do that. So I kind of did this quick sketch of my hand. I just held my hand like this and drew it real quick earlier. Um, and I'll give you an example. So now I'm just going to do this and start to fill in this hand using contours. I don't know why, but when I practiced this for a lesson one time in school, it just became a, a, a fun hobby for me. I really enjoyed it. I loved trying to find the contours 
of, you know, what it was that I had drawn so I can give myself just some practice on creating that form in my head. And, and, it, and it sort of became this thing that it would mesmerize me. And so, and I'll even start with like the tip of the finger and make contours going out to the edge as well. So let's have some fun with that. I'm starting to feel a little Bob Rossi at this point. Um, these are not shiny happy fingers. Actually they're probably really dry fingers because I've been washing my hands so much. I hope you're washing your hands as well. And uh, I've had to put a lot of lotion on my knuckles here. I don't know what it is about our knuckles, but our knuckles, for some reason, those get really dried out with all of this hand sanitizer and washing of the hands. So let's get in there, work on this some more, some contour here. And I'm just sort of having fun um, creating this imaginary contour of my fingers so I can kind of think about form and space and work it through like that. A lot of these activities and just these examples I'm showing you today uh, are just sort of fun to give you something to do um, and take some time with. So it's a good for practice. Um, it's like skills building and really any age group can do that. So let's maybe, I'm gonna break up. Sometimes I like to find areas in the hand or whatever it is I'm drawing I mean, when I was doing this before, I've drawn everything from, um, you know, cups, bowls, random things around the house. So you can too, really quite easily. Okay. Contour drawing. And as you can see, I'm not just trying to create shading or anything along that lines. I'm just trying to give that initial drawing some form using this technique. So let's take a look at this maybe, for instance, like if you're drawing on a circle here, or like a sphere, trying to give it some form and maybe maybe this form goes off maybe if I continue these lines it can give the illusion that this piece is in something else maybe a sphere sitting in a blanket or something like that um, and then let's just kind of do that for fun. Let's mess around with that with this nose as well. Giving this nose some shape. Just messing around. And you can see as you start to create more contour pieces have sort of this fun kind of rhythmic very relaxing quality to it so that's blind or not blind but that's just contour drawing cross contour drawing and of course we did a blind contour drawing before with my face here so let's get back into my next phase um, which is going to be drawing a sphere as best I can on the fly onto a piece of paper 
let's pull in another piece of paper here. I have more paper than I know what to do with at this point. All thanks to my local art store, um, as well as supplies. This is just a fun little mirror here. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about smudging here at the end. So just another technique um, that we can use. And we'll use a couple of different household supplies for that. Uh, so maybe we'll draw the circle first. Let's see if we can create kind of a believable sphere. So anything you have around the house, a Coke can bottle, whatever you want, just to create a nice perfect circle for ourselves. This is a little mirror. Okay, and then I'm gonna kind of think about where I'm gonna be dividing some of the shades. And I'm drawing very lightly now as I start to create a sphere here and I break it up a bit into some different sections of where the light's coming from. And we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna have my light coming from this direction. This is what I'm looking for. Um, core. We have a mid-tone-ish right about here, maybe. And I don't really, I'm obviously, I'm not looking at a sphere, I'm just kind of drawing this. And then right up here, I'm gonna sort of focus this as my kind of highlight and then maybe have a cast shadow down below. So we're going to talk about some few a few different parts of shading as I draw this. And I actually don't like this. So that's why we have an eraser. So if I draw that there and the shadow is coming from here. Maybe the cash shadow is coming down here more. We can have some fun with it. Maybe I don't want to take this too seriously. Just lightly drawing. And we'll throw, bring it up here a little bit. No, 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 maybe, yeah. Okay, so let's start filling this in and talking about the different areas. Um, now I'm just using a number two pencil still, so I have to work very lightly or very harshly. Um, I might be doing some scrubbing, and I might even fast forward through this a little bit as I fill this in. But first, let's talk about a couple of the pieces. So here, the lightest part of this circle is going to be our highlight. So that is our highlight. And then as that light fades off, we'll get into this area here, which is going to be more of a mid-tone. So with that mid-tone, that's what we're looking at there. And as we get darker into, there's always going to be some type of what we'll talk about down here, which is reflected light. We have this core shadow. That'll be the darkest part. So that's going to be our core shadow right in there. And then we'll have a reflected highlight down below. And that reflected. So this is the parts of just any form that you're drawing. Um, is going to be, I love my handwriting, it's the best. I'm probably a pro at handwriting, that's why I still, I draw like I'm in third grade still, and that's okay. We have a reflected highlight, and of course then we have our cast shadow. So, let's start to fill these in, and then we'll go from there.
Okay, so now I'm starting to get some of my shading in here for my for my image, and um, I'm trying to create some more of that form. I don't really need this highlight indicator up here anymore because that's going to be the lightest part of my actual piece. So now I'm going to start shading in some more and trying to blend some of these uh, between as we move forward. I'm going to sharpen my pencil too real quick. Okay, so now let's talk about smudging. Um, smudging is something you can do with just about anything. Now, a lot of times, I don't have it with me, but um, there's something I would use that's just called a smudging stick. And it's essentially like a, you know, a Q-tip almost, which you could use a Q-tip for this same process as well. And uh, maybe I should have got a Q-tip, but I got something uh, different to work with this. And smudging is just what I like to use in order to kind of smooth out some of this graphite, because what we're, we're, we're really working with here on a pencil is graphite. And so with this graphite, um, we can tend to kind of smooth out our image a little bit if we want. But first, I'm going to test it out. You can see I'm already making a mess, getting some of it on my hands. Um, because I am an artist and I'm left-handed and we live that way. Um, remember, this is our light kind of coming down here. Um, so before I get into that, though, let's just show a little bit. So let's do kind of a gradient sort of a pattern um, idea. So we'll go really dark. And then we'll get a little bit lighter. This is another fun exercise that anyone can do. Just practicing using your graphite and blending it the best you can, lightening your touch. Now, if you're actually buying pencils for this sort of thing, or buying graphite that you're going to be working with, um, then you might, I tend to like to just kind of lightly come out here because you'll see what I'll do in a second, but you might also be using different hardnesses of pencils. So number two pencils, just kind of your classic middle of the road uh, lead, but there are different softnesses of uh, lead as well as hardnesses of lead that you have um, for different types of pencils. And there's always pencil sets so you can go in. And if you have a softer pencil, the pencil can leave more graphite on the page and give you a darker tone than a lighter pencil, which in a, the number two is a little is is kind of middle, like I said. So you know it can only go so light. But if it, you have a harder um, lead in there, then you can leave even more of a a lighter kind of a stroke behind. So let's talk about smudging a little bit and smudge. So for smudging, I have toilet paper. Right now, this is gold. This is, this is, I could buy a car with this, but instead I'm gonna make art because I've got toilet paper and most people don't. Just joking. Okay, that and we'll also use a paper towel to work with our smudging. And this is a little rougher and this is a little softer. So we'll just kind of play around with both. And I like to just wrap around my finger and then go from there. And you can see as I smudge, I'm actually blending the graphite and working it through the image as I continue to work on that gradient. 
So I might take this technique. Now, you'll end up with a little bit of graphite on the end of this too. There's two different ways you can work with that. Usually with the smudging stick, I'll have um, some sandpaper and that smudging tick will, stick will also get the graphite on it like this. And if you take this graphite now and you move it somewhere else on the page, you can leave a mark. It's very light right now, but sometimes it'll build up. So if you want to work cleanly, then you kind of have to move yourself around. So I'm going to come in here and start to smudge my piece so I can try to get some of those highlights mid-tones my reflected light I can come back and fix this if I want I probably won't take forever on it because I've been doing this long enough and I want to move on to my last section. And I'll leave in, come in here and work through my shadow a bit. And then you can come in and draw way down more graphite if you need or if you want or even take some graphite out. I can take this same clean one come in here I can erase a little bit to create more of a highlight you can see how now that's much wider and it's almost like making my ball here look a little shinier than it is normally so hopefully you can see that as it's starting to blend our graphite together and it's kind of a fun technique and then I might come in and reinforce some of the dark spots on my ball. And I can even lay down some more graphite if I want. And then smudge that in as well. So maybe I want this core shadow to be a little darker on my ball. So I'm laying down some more graphite that I can then blend in. And I think I'll use my paper towel now. These paper towels are much stronger. So it will move my graphite quicker for me. Okay, so there we go. A semi-believable circle that we have created using household items. We've done some cross-hatching, we've worked with some graphite, we've worked with a pen, we've worked with a paper towel, some toilet paper, which I'm gonna save because this is special. Um, we've done some blind contour drawing. We've done some cross contour drawing. We've taken the line for a walk. We've worked with hatching, some different hatching techniques. We had a little bit of fun with everything. And there's that taking the line for a walk as well there. But now let's talk about finding artwork I don't know how loud that was. That was probably pretty loud, but let's move into it. So let's talk about finding some artwork online and with your phone. And I'm going to talk about using the phone, an app on the phone that you can also find online. So let's talk about a couple places we can find art online as well to inspire us, to help just kind of drive our aesthetic, to learn more, to learn about uh, other cultures, other arts, uh, you know, artworks that are around the world and museums and different places like that. So I'm on my computer now, just for fun, and I'm going to talk about a couple of different places. First one is Google Arts and Culture, Arts and Culture, and that is just artsandculture.google.com. And they've done a really great job of 
working uh, out a bunch of connections with different uh, museums and things like that to share stuff with you. It says get the app here. We'll notice that, and I'll talk about that in a second as well. And with that app, I was able to um, really have some fun and show some artwork in the real world in AR. So we'll mention that in a little bit. Um, but through this, there's all different type of things. You can explore art by color. You can do walks around and like almost like a um, street view kind of a thing of different museums. Uh, they have 3D views of things. There's videos, links to videos on YouTube. Um, one of my favorite uh, pieces that they have here, you can explore different collections, but one of my favorite is if I come down a little ways, I get to a section that's called Explore in High Definition. And I really like this. And uh, let's look at this piece by Vincent van Gogh, The Bedroom. Um, so what's cool about this is if you zoom in with your hand, with your finger, so you can zoom in um, and see the work up close. So you notice I'm zooming in. And what's really neat about this is you can see the brush strokes. They have a, a really high res scan of these artworks where you can look at the brush strokes and see what he was thinking, doing, who knows when it comes to some of the detail of these artworks. And you can really get in there and see the cracks and the dry, how the paint dried and all that. So that's a lot of fun and I enjoy that um, part of the online app, of the, of the desktop version of it. There's also an app that you can download for your phone and I'll show you some video from that as well uh, that I recorded earlier today. And what you can do with that app is you can take works of art actual works of art and it will scan the floor in your room and then you can place living art works of art out into your space and you can put a wall behind them or not or you can look at exactly uh, what um, the size of it is some pieces you'd be surprised at the size and a lot of people sometimes I'll often think uh, you know oh well, well where's the uh, the Mona Lisa you know you always see these giant uh, images, these giant posters of the Mona Lisa, but really the Mona Lisa is just this really tiny little piece of, of artwork. Um, and so that was very interesting to me, as well as you have the ability to go into some augmented reality 3D versions of famous places, museums. Um, the first one I went into and I really enjoyed was the French Cave, uh, where you can see some of these these uh, from thousands of years ago, the very first cave paintings. Um, I believe those have been predated now, but uh, still what they were recognized as being a very important find for many years. Um, and that's really cool. And I'll show you some of the video of that. You should see that right now on the screen. Um, and then as well as uh, even placing you into like a museum setting and you can see uh, many of Vermeer's paintings. I'm a big fan of Vermeer and I love the way he used light, it's a painted light. And as you look, you can use this to walk around in your room and if you want to see something up close you just tap on it and go from there and there's a bunch of other fun features in there like taking a picture and uh, turning it into a style of a painting of, of someone like a Van Gogh or something like that uh, and you can take a picture of anything uh, you know your family a selfie your friends you know you know somebody in the house uh, uh, your cat your dog whatever and, and then um, there's many other uh, just fun little AR, but there's a button at the bottom of that app that you'll use and that'll be what you get to those experiences with. Um, so let's also talk about some places. Uh, if you just do a Google search for online tours of or virtual tours or virtual museum tours, you can find some really great virtual museum tours out there as well. And uh, for instance, the Louvre uh, has one where you can go into their gallery here and I'll kind of show you this a little bit. And if I click on it, it kind of loads and brings me up into the first part. And if I, I can use my mouse to just kind of zoom around 
and check out some things. And you have all these little information things. If you hover over it, it'll tell you what the piece is. And then you can actually click on it so you can see a much better high definition version of that piece, which is a lot of fun. Click on it, make it go away. Um, move through the museum if you want a little bit more. And then of course, see different pieces that are made here. Here's a lot of fun. Here's a pretty famous piece. And if you want to see it, you just zoom. Or if you don't, there we go. Self-portrait. And then let's maybe move through here. These are all very interesting virtual tours and a lot of the galleries are doing this and had already had this set up before any of um, the pandemic or being stuck in isolation but um, these are just interesting ways to learn and get a little bit of culture and check out some more art online so um it's been great sharing just some of these ideas i you know apologize if i sounded like i was rambling at all i do that sometimes um but thanks so much for hanging out with me uh hopefully you're staying safe make some art look at some art seek out art uh buy some materials and just get funky with it. Okay, we'll see you next time.